Uh, thank you, President uh, Fratini, for inviting me to speak here today. I'm pleased to be here with all of you who've been so active uh, in this issue of um, Ar Arctic-related issues, Ambassador Franchini, uh, Senator Rutelli, and Mr. Carpani, who's representing uh, Minister Galetti here today. Um, the leadership, all of you, have demonstrated uh, has placed the Arctic issues on Italy's national agenda and made this new master's program, this very important program, uh, possible. So I am pleased to be here for the inauguration of the new master's degree in sustainable growth, the geopolitics of resources, and Arctic studies. That sounds like a very future-looking, forward-looking uh, topic. So congratulations to COI for bringing this goal uh, to fruition. And congratulations also to the students of the program who will soon be able to apply their knowledge to the economic and geopolitical challenges and opportunities in this increasingly critically <coughs> important field. Today's inauguration is a wonderful opportunity to raise public awareness of global challenges that are literally the tip of the iceberg. If we do not halt the deterioration of the Arctic soon, the entire world, as we know, will pay the consequences. As a thermometer of the world, the Arctic affects all of us. And it is for this reason that the United States, Italy, and the countries around the world are taking action and focusing on these issues today and for the last 20 years. The United States has chaired the Arctic Council for almost one year now on our chosen theme of One Arctic, Shared Opportunities, Challenges, and Responsibilities, illustrates our commitment to collaborative problem solving in the Arctic. We choose these themes because a secure and well-managed Arctic marked by international cooperation is a key priority for the United States. The entire world will visibly benefit from good Arctic stewardship just as the entire world will visibly deteriorate from our negligence. And we come together collectively for all the world. And I was just thinking back uh, 1969 when Americans went to the moon for the first time, and we put a plaque there that says, we come for all mankind. We didn't come for America. We didn't claim the moon for America. The moon is not America's property. Just as we go to Mars now in 2020, uh, we hope to come for uh, all humanity. Just, um, it's about cooperation. And this is the best uh, example of why we need uh, global cooperation. There's only one Arctic, and it's, a, it's healthy preservation is vital not only for the countries located in that region, but also for the entire world. As an accredited observer, Italy plays a valuable role through the contribution of scientific expertise <clears throat> and public support for council priorities. Through the work of Italian researchers in the Arctic Council's six working groups and the resources available to the scientific community through Italy's research stations in Norway, Italy is demonstrating its commitment to promote sustainable development in and environmental protection of this strategic space. The Arctic Council has progressed immensely and gained international legitimacy in the 20 years since its formation. As the chair of the Arctic Council, the United States is focusing on three areas. One, the first is the impact on climate change on the Arctic and the spreading awareness about the real dangers this change brings. Ongoing Arctic studies in Alaska have shown unprecedented levels of permafrost melting releasing methane gas into the atmosphere. To let you know the severity of this situation, remember methane gas is 30 times more damaging than CO2 to global warming. Arctic climate change is especially worrisome given the region's direct impact on global weather patterns and sea levels. The warmer weather has drastic effects on Arctic ice as we know. If large ice sheets in areas like Greenland melt, sea levels could rise by meters, and many meters, potentially. A change that would not be <coughs> reversible, maybe forever. 
with so many miles of coastland, Italy in particular is at risk from rising sea levels. Rising sea le seas of just a few meters would put large portions of Italy's coastlines underwater, including natural, national treasures such as Venice, which we already know is suffering from severe uh, flooding problems today. America, of course, is not immune from this. Uh, it's very much threatened, just like Italy. Take the state of Florida, for example. You know, we have a political campaign going on, and the whole issue of global warming is front and center. And indeed, some of the candidates running today are people denying that there is a problem with global warming. You know, a certain senator from Florida running for president believes it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. But take Florida. Florida, the lower half of Florida, Broward County, where Miami is located, is an average six feet or two meters above sea level. Mm -hmm. What is Florida going to be like in 40 and 50 years? It's going to be severely impacted. Uh, people will pay more attention to that as this becomes more apparent. You know, I personally believe real estate prices are going to start collapsing in Florida when people understand what they're buying on coastlines may not be there in 40 and 50 years to be used. Problems in Greenland and Alaska are not localized, but rather are representative of a wider global climate menace that must be recognized and prioritized. We have a collective responsibility to resolve the harmful impacts of climate change before the tip of the iceberg becomes a truly Titanic collapse. Knows the connection, iceberg, Titanic. Nobody gets that. <laughs> <laughs> The second area includes priorities and initiatives uh, surrounding Arctic safety, security, and stewardship. In his Glacier Conference address in 2015, President Obama highlighted the strain we put on the global environment to sustain a rapidly growing world population and all the energy that that population will consume and the heat that will come from that. The countries of the world need to recognize the dangers of poor stewardship. We should coordinate our efforts to improve human survival capability in the region so that we may further study the effects of human Arctic interaction and best stewardship practices. Search and rescue exercises involving capable parties will enable us to share best practices and improve our capabilities in this harsh environment. We should use this growing body of international law to protect the relatively pristine Arctic seas the United States has proposed to build upon the Arctic Council's oil spill preparedness and response work through increased information sharing on the effects of spills and the availability and effectiveness of cleanup technologies. However, further research should be undertaken to discover safe and sustainable practices for assessing and handling Arctic Ocean oil. I hate to even think about the idea of drilling in such a pristine area. Yeah, I think that uh, in the future, this is my own personal beliefs, in 20 years, uh, that we should leave the oil in the ground. And we won't need it because of all the technological advances growing, alternative energy availabilities. Um, instead of thinking how we can extract all the oil, think about what we've done in the last 150 years in the world. 150 years, we've scooped up all this uh, coal, oil, um, gas that has took millions of years to accumulate, and we burned it in the atmosphere. And we wonder why we have a problem today. Well, we don't have to do that, we're finding, for getting and satisfying all the energies that we will need uh, down the road. A third area is improving the economic and living conditions of the Arctic region itself. The Arctic has never been, as we know, an easy place to survive, let alone to raise a family or to make a living. The story of Arctic communities is inherently one of resilience, adaptation, and survival from one generation to the next. But global climate change now threatens life in this region in a way that it hasn't ever been threatened before. Isolated Arctic communities rely largely on dirty diesel engines for energy. Uh, the U.S. Remote Communities Renewable Energy Partnership will provide clean, renewable energy but these communities still face the challenges of poor freshwater security and sanitation because of the high costs of local water treatment. Surely we can provide alternative energy availability in this region over the next 10, 15 years. Unless the global community comes together to address this challenge, the dramatic climate impacts that 
We're seeing uh, in this part of the world will be a harbinger for every part of the world. Migration challenges, front and center today, of Europeans that we witness every day for, um, are coming out for a number of reasons. The abs but the absence of water, of food, of electricity could witness the beginning of climate refugees. Imagine all the populations living along coastal areas that can no longer live there. They've got to go somewhere else. Thirteen months ago, the embassy was proud to screen Fabiano Ventura's internationally acclaimed project on the trail of the glaciers, which I witnessed and introduced last year. His stunning photographic display highlighted the drastic changes we've seen in our global environments over the past <clears throat> centuries. He had pictures of 100 years ago in the same spot looking at glaciers of 100 years later, and the changes were dramatic. And since those pictures were taken, it's only increased in terms of its intensity. By juxtaposing his own photos, um, Mr. Ventura captured the evolution of global warming on our planet, which is very dramatic. His pictures remind us of what happened when we underestimate our responsibilities to protect the environment. Those pictures urge us to pursue new initiatives to counter global Arctic climate change and to learn how to conserve our resources effectively. We recognize that there are many concerns over the Arctic today, and we know there are many steps we must take together to solve them. And we hope to continue to work together with all invested parties to maintain the same collegial spirit that has brought together the creation of the master's program that we are here today to celebrate. You know, when you look down the, the world for the next 40, 50, 60, 70 years, there are gonna be tremendous, tremendous changes, you know. I won't see them, uh, many of us here won't see them, but the young people, the people in this master's program will surely experience them. There's no reversing of much of what's happened, but we can at least try to mitigate as much as we can today and come together and come up with solutions. So it's gonna be the young people's world that, and the young people who are in this master's program uh, who are gonna be the, at the frontier of trying to solve what are dramatic and extraordinary problems that we face, everybody face, the world will face in the future. So it's good that we're establishing this program and I'm glad to be here today. Thank you very much.